my name is Laura McGregor Falco, and wow, these lights are bright, by the way. <laughs> um, I lead our Global Partner Program Office and Partner Marketing for Broadcom. So many of you may not know Broadcom because historically we're a chip manufacturer, but we grow through acquisition. So you may know some of the software companies that we've acquired, such as CA Technologies, Symantec, and most recently VMware last month. So that was big news. Um, so at Broadcom, as I mentioned, we're an R&D and innovation first company. So we are focused on bringing best in class solutions uh, to the world's largest uh, multinational organizations. And because of that focus, we know we can't be everything to everyone. So our partners are critical to our success. So we take that innovative spirit and we extend that to our go-to-market and our partnership relationships. So with us, on, or with me on stage, I have two of those strategic partners, Televerity and Kerasoft. So I'd like to introduce you to the panel. So first to my left is Alicia Rasta and she is the Vice President of Sales for Televerity. Next to her is Brittany Perdue, and Brittany's uh, our Partner Support Desk Specialist um, at Televerity as well. And then next to Brittany is Diana Sibbe, and she's with Carousel, she's the Director of Sales. Okay, so let's get started and hear about this great story. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start with Alicia. And I'm going to warn you guys, you might need tissues. <laughs> I have one, because <laughs> make their stories make me cry every time. So um, Alicia and I have been working together since the beginning. Um, Alicia, I, I'm so inspired by what Alicia does every day and the work that she and Televerity continue to do. Um, and she ha brings a very special story to the overall Televerity mission as well. So Alicia, do you mind sharing your story, please? Absolutely, but before we talk about my story or Televerdi, we have to talk about incarceration. Um, it may surprise them to know that one out of every three people in the United States have a criminal background. Um, that's about 70 million people across the country, which is also eerily close to the amount of college graduates we have across the country. One in two people in this country are impacted by an immediate family member or friend who's been incarcerated. Um, surprisingly, women are the fastest growing population within the prison system. They have increased over 750% in the last two decades, and 71% of incarcerated females have children under the age of 18. But the craziest statistic is um, 60 to 70% pe percent of people who are getting out of prison uh, will be rearrested with new charges within three years from the date of their re release. So you might say, why, right? Why would anybody do that? Imagine getting out of prison with a check for $250. You don't have a job, you don't have a place to live, you don't have transportation, so obviously you need to go get a job. Um, but there's that box, right? There's the box on the application that says, do you have any, any felony convictions? And we all know that after you check that box, a lot of those applications don't go any further. So you slip back into what you know how to do in order to survive, and the cycle perpetuates. So this is the impetus for Televerdi. Our um, CEO, previous CEO and co-founder was famous for saying, um, what did he say? Discarding people, discarding people for the rest of their life based on a decision that they made on the worst day of their life is such a waste of human potential. So the thought process was you teach women how to have a marketable skill when they go home so that they can get a career and be successful and take care of their children and break that cycle. And that's, that's what we did. And yes, I did say women, because the, the male population within the prison systems is very, very different. Um, women are nurturers, women are mothers, they're going home to something and they have to take care of their families. Also excellent communicators and problem solvers, which is pretty much the epitome of being a great salesperson. Um, but motivation goes further as well, right? If you think of your own internal SDR or ISR teams, how are they motivated? They're motivated by a bonus plan or a commission check. Um, a spiff if they meet their goal by the end of the month. The women that are working for Televerdi are literally working for their life every single day. They are working to buy a home. They're working to get their children back. They're working to get a job in a Fortune 2000 company because that's a very real possibility for each and every one of them. A lot of our clients will actually recruit from Televerdi's corporate office because when you're able to get somebody who comes from Televerdi, they have something to prove. They have a grit and a level of determination that you will not find anywhere else. Um, so we talked a lot in the beginning about the metrics, right, which are kind of scary and surprising sometimes. <coughs> but if we talk about the metrics for Televerdi, um, we talked about 60 to 70% of people will be, have new charges within three years. For the women of Televerdi, that drops down to 
percent. If you look at the last three years, yes. it is. If you look at the last three years, we've actually had nobody return to prison, which is even better. The women who, um, we call it graduate, which is, get, which is come home, but um, the women who graduate from Salo Verde make four times the national average of other people who are returning to society. But my favorite metric is really about those children of the women of Salo Verde. Um, 11 times less likely to go to prison themselves and 11 times more likely to graduate high school, which really does break that cycle. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> So, well, you asked about my story, which is which is an interesting one. So, I um, I started celebrating 14 years ago. I just had my 14 year anniversary in October, and I actually started within one of the one of the incarcerated facilities. Um, I was young. I uh, you guys remember OxyContin? Everybody knows what OxyContin is, the the safe drug, which is not. It's like a, a prescribed heroin. Um, but I got arrested for fraudulent prescriptions and ended up serving nine years in the Arizona State Women's Department of Corrections and had young kids, didn't know anything about business, anything about technology, and Televerdi saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. So brought me into the company, we went through training on, on technology, business, markets, personas, um, through a lot of coaching and development and upskilling, ended up getting promoted into the sales organization in 2015. And um, through that, learned, I, so something about me is I, I was famous for saying and when I was young, I don't want to play if I'm not going to win, right? Meaning if I didn't know I was going to succeed at something, I was not going to try. But working at this company let me know that I'm actually pretty good at a lot of things, but I, when I'm willing to take that step, and that's what it does is boost that confidence. So um, next month will be 10 years since I came home. Uh, I'm on the executive team at the company. <laughs> It's a really big, um, it's a big milestone. But I'm on the executive team of Televerdi. I, hold, I head up our global sales organization, which encompasses everything that is customer facing. And without this organization, I, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am. And um, one of my mentors in the company, he gets so angry. He's one of the first employees that started and he gets so angry with me. He's like, stop saying that. He's like, we didn't do this for you. We created an environment where you would be able to learn and grow and really evolve your skill set and reach your potential. And I'm sitting here a logical person, like, yeah, but without Televerdi, that never ever would have been able to take place. So now my, my privilege of a job is to, to partner with new organizations to create that exact same opportunity that I had because I'm not special. Any, anybody can do it, but the second chance and the opportunity to reach that potential uh, is something that you really can't replace. Well, I think you're special, and I love working with you. And one of my favorite things to do with Alicia, thank you for sharing your story, is once a year I go with her to Arizona to the prison on site to go visit our Televerdi team. And I like to bring as many people as I can who haven't had that experience within our organization because they come with a specific mindset and bias, to be honest, and they leave with a completely different mindset and no longer a bias and, and inspired. So um, thank you for that. Thank you for your story. <clears throat> All right, so Brittany, similar question. So um, Brittany has been with me through pretty much every program that we've done together with Broadcom to date. Um, and you've seen not only, it's not only an inspiring story, your story, but also you've driven a, a ton of success for our business and touched multiple areas of our business, including our partners. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you've done? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll start a little bit with my story. So I began my journey as a heroin addict and a drug dealer. Um, I started using at a very young age and it drove me to my first prison sentence in 2012 for three years. I was released, as Alicia said, with barely anything. I really didn't know what I was doing and I didn't feel like I could integrate back into society. So I went back to what I knew, selling drugs, getting high. Uh, that led me to my last sentence of 9.25 years. Um, I started my time off doing a lot of the same things, getting high, just not really making myself a better person. And I wondered if I'd ever be able to break this cycle. Um, it's, it's funny, actually, one of my friends told me about Televerdi, and I would see the ladies walking around on the yard, and I mean, man, they, were, they held themselves so high to a different standard. They were educated, they were intelligent, and they also walked around with pride. And in that exact moment, I knew that's what I was gonna get. I needed that. So I applied in 2019, um, luckily got the job. Right out of new hire, was placed on 
my favorite campaign, Broadcom. So I've worked various <laughs> campaigns for them now for over four years. One of the campaigns specifically was uh, for our core customers. Um, that started in 2019 with one agent, uh, shortly after we had the semantic acquisition. So we added another headcount for that. Um, that program itself brought in over $13 million in pipeline and over $4.7 million in revenue. That campaign uh, specifically also did something with the customers. It bridged the gap between Broadcom and their customers. Um, unfortunately, some of them didn't know the new processes, uh, weren't aligned with the right uh, account directors, so we were able to do that. But within that communication, we also brought back priceless feedback to Broadcom. Um, trends, customer concerns, things they were experiencing. And that allowed us to really strategically um, figure out a plan to how to get ahead of it in the future. So that was great. Um, another one we touched was uh, the uh, enterprise accounts. Um, that started early 2019 with four agents. Um, this one to date, and I can imagine in this exact moment with the girls working, it's growing. Over $72 million in pipeline and over $30 million in revenue from this program. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's funny, I was actually just teamsing them earlier. They wished us luck and they're working hard. So know that those <laughs> numbers are growing. Um, the thing that made this the enterprise uh, campaign so successful, it was so unique and strategic in the fact that the agents work hand in hand with both the partners and the account directors. So all sales areas are covered and they were able to build a trusting relationship to know that these opportunities and uh, the work that's being put in is, is gonna be successful. Um, again, so it, the campaign continues on and it's uh, the collaboration and the strategy between all members of the agents. Um, I believe that this campaign will probably keep going for years. So, <laughs> um, The next one, my favorite, where I reside, the Partner Help Desk Program. Um, it started actually in 2020 with only one agent, but was so successful to grow to a headcount now of six, and one solely supports our partner, CDW. And two of those agents are actually in EMEA, so we have full coverage. Um, even though this campaign doesn't bring in actual revenue, it did something for Broadcom that was priceless. We were able to provide over 40,000 members of our channel a direct line of support at any moment at any time. And unfortunately, that wasn't something that we were really capable of doing beforehand. Um, this was a game changer. Um, we built these relationships with these partners and you know, it's one specifically, um, our public sector, Broadcom's public sector distributor, Carasoft. Um, it's really funny that I'm sitting here with Diana today because when I started off in 2019 as a caller, I actually worked with her. I'd router lead opportunities. And, um, you know, she was somebody I really looked up to. She was so professional and she knew just how to get deals moving and, and just did it on the run. And, you know, uh, I'd be embarrassed to ask certain questions to certain people being new, but when I brought them up to her, she was so resourceful. She, she helped me and I really looked up to her. So... I felt like I was an extension of her team in that moment, and that really how I started my journey. And now being on the partner help desk and you know um, helping manage the program, I feel like she's now an extension of our team as well as we're all connected with Broadcom. So it's been actually a really beautiful experience to touch all these campaigns and go for a circle and see where we're at now. So. And lastly, as... Alicia said, my graduation, so, sorry about that. <laughs> it's my graduation, uh, my release. So I was released from prison in, on September 11th of this year. And um, I served about eight years. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I served about eight years, and because of Televerdi giving women like that were in my scenario, these, these opportunities and this chance to grow and learn. Um, I broke that cycle. I, I have a life now. I, um, I found my self-worth, I have confidence, and I'm a professional businesswoman. And <laughs> now I've been out three months, under three months, actually, and I'm sitting in New York, 
in front of a bunch of intelligent, beautiful, prominent individuals. And I don't believe many of you would have even known I was incarcerated unless I had mentioned it. So um, I have a career path. Uh, I received an associate's degree while incarcerated, working for my bachelor's, and life is beautiful. And I just lastly want to thank Alicia, Televerdi, everybody out there in, in Broadcom for really believing in me and trusting that um, I'll run the business successfully. So, thank you. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Brittany, again, and thank you for sharing your story. And you are an extension of our team. You are an extension of our partners teams. I know that I see it every day. And not only is it such an inspiring story, but she delivers results. And her, that whole team delivers results, which is really the name of the game here. So big applause for that. All right, so you mentioned Kerasoft, and I know this is the first time you and Diana have met in person, but you've been working together for years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Diana is part of Kerasoft, who is a very strategic partner for us, especially in the, in the public sector space. Um, so Kerasoft, as I understand it, also does a lot of DE&I initiatives as well to support women in, in the world. So Diana, do you want to talk a little bit more about what you do and kind of your interactions with Broadcom and the team? Absolutely. Well, first off, thank you for having me and allowing me to speak about such an important topic and, and an incredible program. A um, little bit about myself and, and, and our initiatives. Um, so my name is Diana Spey. I've been with Kerasoft for over 10 years, um, and I manage the Broadcom state, local education, and private sector market. Um, and as you mentioned, Kerasoft's an IT solutions provider, and um, we partner with many of the channel partners, um, a lot of them being in the room today. Um, and we work very closely with them to ensure we're meeting the, the customer's needs and to make sure that we're supporting their various missions and programs. Um, Kerasoft is absolutely a, a supporter of the DEI initiative, and um, we make every effort to make sure we're continuing to support that and, and, and amplify that. Um, and we've been honored to receive multiple recognitions for that, just to name a couple. Most recent ones in 2022, we received the 2022 Premier Sales Employer by the Institute for Excellence in Sales, um, and more recently, the uh, Premier Women in Sales Employer um, by, by the IAS as well. So um, we take that very seriously, and um, we've even been able to partner, partner with Women of the Channel um, to host the Women of Government IT conference at our office in Herndon. I mean, we used to be Herndon, now it's Reston. Um, in Reston, and um, we had a lineup of incredible women um, you know, speak about their journey in, in, in the industry, and, um, and I felt so empowered leading that, and, and, our, and, and they empowered our attendees, and um, we love that we could be able to host things like that and, and, and continue to support that. Um, but I think what really resonates the most for us is Kerasoft is a large leading tech company. And with that comes the opportunity and the scalability to reach across the United States, whether it's for hiring or to partnering with. Um, and no matter their background or experience, we have a very inclusive and supportive ecosystem internally and externally. And you know, that includes hiring military wives across the United States and um, women in underserved communities and other parts of the country and um, that support women in IT and um, also partnering with um, minority and women-owned businesses in organizations like Televerde who um, prioritize women in IT. So we take that very seriously and um, we will definitely continue to do that. Um, and Brittany, you mentioned our long-standing partnership, which has indeed been a wonderful experience, and um, we, we love working with that team. Um, their, you know, partner help desk program and their lead gen programs are truly amazing and have proven to be very valuable and successful for us and our partners. Um, and, yeah, we love working with you guys, and... Uh, we actually just finished working on a mm -hmm. partner help desk request, um, which was um, challenging to say the least. <laughs> but with you know that team's determination and, and motivation to to 
do such a great job. It's always a pleasant experience and a professional experience, and you know we can't, we truly can't thank that team enough for all the support and help that they provide and and the efforts they do in in growing the Broadcom business with us. So um, we really, really thank you guys for that. Um, and I, you know, not to not to get too emotional here, but. The Televerde Broadcom, I mean, the Televerde program and their mission is just absolutely amazing. It's, you know, hearing about the organization and how they support women and, um, you know, the statistics that Alicia walked through uh, a little bit ago, they, they just speak for themselves. And, you know, both of your stories are so moving and inspiring, and every time I hear that, Laura and I but, but both start shedding a tear because <laughs> it truly is it truly is very inspiring and the fact that Televerde um, is providing this opportunity for so many women incarcerated right now and um, you know ultimately setting them up for success it's upon their release is is, is so incredible and um, you know I feel truly honored to be able to sit here and speak with you all today and um, and to work with you, knowing that the, jour the journeys that you've, you know, embarked on and, and the obstacles you've had to overcome and the success that you've had in doing so. Um, so Carisoft, um, we're committed to supporting the DEI um, initiative and, you know, we'll, via programs and, and partnerships like this, and we'll certainly continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Diana, for that. We truly value, value our partnership with Kerasoft, and we love working with you, and, and I know the team does as well. Mm -hmm. And congratulations on those awards for DE and I. Keep it up. Thank you. Yes. All right. So before we go, I thought it might be nice to ask the ladies for their advice to everyone on what are the things that they think um, you could do in your everyday lives to support women in your communities or at work. So Alicia, do you want to kick us off? Absolutely. Um, mine's kind of twofold. So um, we've all heard the stats around how men will apply for a job even if they think they're slightly qualified versus women applying for a job only if they feel like they're 100% qualified for it. Um, encourage those in your company to go for those next steps. Because like I said, you, when, you, when you take the steps, you can actually find out you're pretty good at what it is that you're trying. But we also have to lead by example and go for those positions ourselves. Now, closely tied with that is, um, you know, the courage that it takes to apply for that job when you're only a percentage qualified in your opinion. If you can imagine people that have um, children they need to stay home with or they have that felony conviction that they know is going to come up or any really unrepresentative, un unrepresented community, you know, open your mind and, and see if that's something that your company will be open to. Because I tell you what, if you bring in somebody who is proving something that has the grit, has the determination, you're going to get a top performer in no time. It's, it's uh, well worth it. So if we can go back to our companies, look and see if that box is something that needs to be checked in the hiring process, it can go a long way. Awesome. Great advice. All right, Brittany, same question. Yes. Um, so something that I've dealt with not only with... Um, obviously my background of being a felon, but obviously the way I look. Um, I've been judged a lot, and you know, whether it be tattoos, my background, don't ever let somebody not have a chance because the way they look. Because I'm telling you a lot, there's a lot of golden treasures that are just lost. Sometimes they just need a little shine and they'll come out. And try to remember to tell your mentees or you know, your children, your kids, whoever, that no isn't the end all be all. It's, it's just a learning lesson. And it's, and you can get past it, so. All right, Diana, same question. So, two things for me. Um, one, always strive to be a mentor to women in your, um, you know, your, your workspace or community, you know, provide some guidance and, and help empower them and give them opportunities if, if it's available and, um, you know, working together is just going to amplify your efforts to empower change. Um, and most importantly, never ever let fear or intimidation stand in the way of your success or, or ability to, to, to empower change. You know, speak up for what you care about, be confident, and just own it. 
own it. Um, so, um, yeah, don't, don't let that get in, get in your way. <laughs> awesome. Great advice. All right, so I'm going to answer the question as well. Uh, years ago, when I was at this event, there was a speaker on stage who said that every woman needs a mentor, a champion, and a coach. And that stuck with me for the years, and so that would be my advice back. It's not my original idea, it was hers, but make sure all of you have a mentor, a champion, really important, and a coach, and then be that for other women in your lives as well, both at work and personally. So that would be my advice. <laughs> All right, so we want to thank you for your t time and attention today and all the applause. If you would like to learn more about Televerity, there is a flyer in your bags that talks about kind of what the Televerity mission is and what we do at Broadcom together with Broadcom and our partners. Um, and if you would like to come by and learn more about either Kerasoft or Televerity or Broadcom, you can come by and we have a set of tables up here. We'd love to talk to you. Thank you for your time. Is that the water?